what may be the hottest year in history, scientists have recorded radical changes to the permafrost in Antarctica. The Pandora virus, a so-called giant virus with the largest genome size ever recorded. The crabs also display increased aggression, even towards larger predators. A striking new weather anomaly has claimed many coastlines around the world. NASA is examining these clouds to figure out... We've detected large amounts of an organic composite. So far, the sample doesn't match any of the DNA records we've compared it with. We all saw it. Those creatures coming out of the sea on that oil rig. The president has declared a national emergency... It's obvious that what we're dealing with here is a biological weapon. As of today, we are at war. It's taking their minds. I saw them walk right into the sea. Thousands of people. Thousands. The mist is gone, but the city is dead. The roads are broken. You must join one of the havens. Do not attempt to survive on your own. Hello and welcome to Phoenix Point. At the time of recording this video, we are less than a week away from the official launch, so we decided it was time to jump in and start a playthrough of what is going to be our release build. Now this is still slightly pre-release, so we are still working on catching those last few bugs, fixing a few typos and things like that, so you may see the occasional typo and little glitch here and there. We're not going to be cutting anything out from this playthrough, we will be including all of the cutscenes, all of the narration. So if you have been avoiding spoilers and you still want to do so you're probably going to be okay for the first couple of videos of this series but as we get further in you will experience bits of the story we're going to be playing with the tutorial enabled it is relatively short and it can be disabled if you wish to skip it completely but it does give us a little bit more of an intro to the game and as we want to show this in its entirety we're going to go through and start with that tutorial so let's go and hop right in my name is randolph symes I am the last leader of the Phoenix Project. If you are hearing this, I am most likely dead. But in happier news, a scarab has been sent to pick you up, and its artificial intelligence will take you to Phoenix Point. Get to it quickly and safely. Okay, so here we are at the start of our first tutorial mission. As you would expect, first of all, it just gives us a little bit of advice about moving the camera around, pretty much as you would expect in any game of this type. And uh, what we need to do is we've got our first soldier selected here, Lisa Claire. And we need to just move her over into this position. So if you are not familiar with Phoenix Point, Phoenix Point is a turn-based tactical strategy game, much in the vein of XCOM and other similar games. It's actually developed by the creator of the original XCOM series. And uh, you essentially take it in turns to move your soldiers, and then the enemy takes it in turns to move theirs. And uh, most missions require you to try and wipe out the enemy, although some missions do have specific objectives. And moving around is done on this grid. You have a limited number of action points that you can use in every turn. They allow you to move as well as fire weapons and use items. You can see above my soldier's head, in fact it's just below the cursor, those four little blue lines. That actually represents how many action points we have. We have a total of four, but they do break down into smaller action points as we move. And as you can see, as I move the cursor further away from my soldier, those blue bars deplete because it will re require more action points to move further away. So we're going to go and move this soldier out of the blue zone into the orange zone. As long as we remain within the blue zone, we will still have enough action points remaining to fire our currently equipped weapon. Uh, but we are going to be moving into the orange zone, which means we will not be able to fire. But uh, let's go ahead and move over there. 
And instantly we are going to spot our first enemy. Now, unfortunately, we can't take a shot because we have used all of our action points. I will go through and read some of these pop-ups for you. So enemy icons above your action bar will show all spotted enemies. That's the little bar down here. You can see if I mouse over the little crab man icon, it zooms the camera in on the, uh, on the enemy that we can see. A red icon shows an enemy in direct line of sight for the selected player. So because it's red, that means we can actually get a shot shot at it we can see it all of the text in the game is currently in english the release version will have localized text in a number of different languages so we will be supporting uh, obviously english french spanish german italian russian uh, polish and simplified chinese i don't think i've missed any out so the audio will still be in english but you will have the language subtitles so we now need to select our next soldier. We can do that by clicking on them or by pressing tab. And we have Bave C. Jack here. So as I was explaining before, soldiers have four action points to use for shooting and movement each turn. A soldier can move a number of tiles for each action point depending on his speed. Areas marked with a blue outline show tiles which the soldier can shoot from. A blue shooting line will be shown uh, at the section selection marker position if an enemy can be shot from there. So, as you can see, if I were to move my cursor to this position here where it's telling me that I need to move to, you can see that blue line that's sort of tracing a path from the cursor over to the crab man. And that basically means if we were standing in that position, we would have a line of sight on that enemy. If we were to move here behind the wall, we can't see it, so we're not getting that line. Again, we'd still get the line if we moved out, out here into the orange zone, but we wouldn't have enough action points to take the shot. So we're going to move to where the tutorial is telling us to, right here behind these boxes. Now, just watch carefully where we're actually going to stop in a moment, because this is a very useful um, mechanic within Phoenix Point. You can actually move one tile at a time if you want to. You'll only use as much action as uh, that space requires, so you can just edge forwards a tile at a time. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and move all the way out to this position here next to these crates. Now what you'll notice here is we actually stopped early. We stopped two tiles short of where we were heading to. And that is because we spotted a new enemy. So when you spot a new enemy for the first time, you will automatically stop your movement even if you've told your soldier to move further away. And this is fantastic because it means if you suddenly bump into something you didn't expect, uh, you stop your movement, you get the remaining action points refunded for the remaining movement that you didn't take and then you can go ahead and if you want move back around the corner back into cover you can reissue your orders or you can take a shot so speaking of shooting the health bar indicates the current hit points the armor pips to the right show the amount of damage prevented for each shot when targeting an enemy the amount of damage from an attack is shown on the health bar the whiter the damage prediction the more likely it is so we're going to go ahead and select the fire Target. weapon action here and you can actually see this enemy's health bar appears at the top of the screen it's got 110 health and you can see that the health bar is almost completely white which means we are very very likely um, to kill it which is also the reason we can see that red flashing skull uh, over the uh, enemy's icon so we're actually using here our assault rifle and the assault rifle fires um, a burst of shots so we are going to uh, take our shot now it does have 10 armor so each shot that hits will be reduced by 10 damage but we're very very close and we've got a good chance of killing it. So bear in mind this is the tutorial. Can't really go wrong with it. But let's go put some bullets into this crab. And there we go. Down it goes. It does become alerted when it sees us. Because we've stepped out in front of it. So it now knows we are there. Not that it matters because it no longer exists. So we can go into standby mode. Once a soldier is out of action points, he enters standby mode and the next soldier is selected. If there are no soldiers with action points remaining, your turn ends. You can order a soldier to enter standby mode by using the spacebar, selecting the icon from the action bar or pressing B on the gamepad. So because this soldier could still move a little bit, because you can see there are some orange spaces left, he hasn't entered standby mode, but we can go ahead and put him in standby mode, which will select our other soldier. We can't really do much on this turn. We could move if we wanted to, but we're going to follow the tutorial and hit end turn. 
and we take some shots from the crab man. So damage and body parts. When a character is attacked, damage is done to the body part that was hit as well as reducing general hit points. Wounded body parts are marked in yellow on the damage display left of the health bar. Disabled body parts are marked in red. Disabled body parts will usually cause bleeding and the loss of strength and possibly willpower. Any special ability given by the body part will be lost. So if you actually look at this little paper doll to the left of our character's health bar, you can see that the head is yellow. That means we took a shot to the head. So the he our head has taken some damage. It's not disabled, so we're not uh, losing willpower and we don't have a bleed. But we did lose approximately half of our health. Cover and environment. Any object in the environment can provide cover by blocking the path of a projectile. However, soldiers will make use of cover in two different ways. When next to a low obstacle or a low wall, soldiers will crouch to reduce exposure. That's much in the way that our soldiers position now. When next to a high obstacle or high wall, soldiers will remain standing but can step to the side to shoot. So it's very important in Phoenix Point to understand the way that both the ballistics and cover works. Every shot that's fired in Phoenix Point is a physically simulated object within the game engine. So the bullets actually trace a path from the weapon they're fired from towards the target. The bullets will actually hit anything that they strike within the game engine. So if they hit the enemy target, excellent, you've got yourself a solid hit. However, it's possible for bullets to go slightly wide. You could miss your target, you could hit another enemy, you could hit a friendly, and you can hit obstacles within the game world, including buildings, rocks, lampposts, crates, and all manner of cover and props around the map. This is fantastic because it means you don't actually have to be right next to cover for it to be effective. As long as there is an obstacle somewhere between you and the thing firing at you, there's a chance it's going to get in the way of those projectiles. Anyway, let's go ahead, follow the tutorial, and move Lise over to this space here. Now we're standing next to high cover, which means we are standing up, and we can't actually see our target at the moment because he's kind of around the corner. And this is where we can talk about the free aim mode of Phoenix Point. Free aim allows you to target a body part and see the effects of disabling that body part. Each body part has its own hit points and armor value. Damage prediction is also shown for the targeted body part. The outer blue circle shows where all of your shots will land. The more accurate the weapon, the smaller the circle. So we're going to go into free aim. We're going to select fire. And we can either hit this button down here or we can just scroll in with the mouse wheel. So see, if we were taking a normal shot, we do actually track the center of mass of the target. Even though the target is moving slightly because it does have a, a, an animation there, an idle animation, our target reticule is actually moving with the enemy. But it's going to hit a very specific point. If we go ahead and zoom in, you can now actually see that we can take manual control of where this target reticule goes. And the animation is actually paused at this point as well, so we can get a better shot. Zooming back out and just going into free, uh, into normal fire mode, there is no valid target, simply because he is around the wall for us. We can't actually hit him at the moment because the obstacle's in the way. But free aim allows us to step out around the corner. So as we highlight the different body parts, we can see um, what they are. We can see how much armor they have, how much health they have, and what will happen if we disable them. So for example, if we were to disable this arm, this arm doesn't have any uh, armor, and it has 50 hit points. If we disable it, it will cause a bleeding of 10 damage per turn, and it will reduce the Arthron's maximum hit points by 10. We could also try and shoot out its launcher arm. This is its grenade launcher uh, that it has on its arm. Uh, it has 80 health, no armor, and if we were to take this out, we stop it from being able to use its grenade launcher. The legs have a little uh, more health. They've got 100 health uh, on the legs, and they do have 10 armor. So that 10 armor value is going to reduce the damage of each of our projectiles by 10. And we can also try and take out its weapon. We can aim for the machine gun. Of course, that has an armor value of 20, so we're even less likely to do damage to that. And you want to try and avoid hitting parts that are heavily armored, like the torso. And if you've got a creature that has an armored variation, they're usually pretty tough. The armor value that's displayed on the main health bar at the top of the screen takes an uh, average of the creature's armor values. So we're going to go and try and put a shot 
sort of in the middle here. So 100% of our bullets will land within the outer blue circle. We can zoom in and out if we want to be a little bit um, more precise with our aiming. Uh, but the reticule zooms in and out with it. So you don't actually get an advantage by zooming further in or zooming further out. The targeting reticule stays the same size. So 100% of our shots will land within the outer circle and approximately 50% will land within the inner circle. We're going to aim around about here. So even if we miss the torso, we're likely to hit the leg or the arm. We should hit with most, if not all, bullets. Oh, yeah. I got the kill. And there we go, it is down. So we're just going to go ahead and complete this tactical tutorial by moving our Making two soldiers to the indicated positions. And because both of our soldiers are now completely out of action points, we get this automated message asking us if we want to end our turn. You might wonder why you would ever pick no, but there are certain abilities that you can get for your soldiers that will allow you to activate and allow them to do something else even if they are out of action points, such as a dash for example. But we don't want to do anything else, so we will just end our turn. Here come three more Arthrons for us to play with. These are the melee variety. And they're all carrying shields, which are rather nasty because those shields have a lot of armor. Very, very difficult to get the shot past them. So this is where the tutorial kind of hands things over to us and we get to take shots at these three enemies. We're going to take Lise here and move her over to this position behind this cover. We're going to see if we can take this Arthron out on this side. Target. So we've automatically locked onto the one that's closest, but we can go ahead and use the tab button to switch between them. And we can also uh, select them by clicking on them at the bottom above the action bar. Now this one's going to be very, very difficult to hit because its carapace is kind of in the way. As you can see, the carapace has 20 armor. Uh, the shield down here, which we can barely target, has 30 armor. I'm going to try and aim right in here and see if we can get the nice squishy fleshy parts. We're going to try and hit the arm and the leg if we can. So, as you can see, if I was to put the cursor over the carapace, the damage prediction at the top of the screen isn't completely white, which means we're unlikely to kill it. If we aim in here, it's completely white, which means it is more likely. It's still not guaranteed, but this is going to give us a better chance. So, we did a decent amount of damage to it. We did actually uh, damage its shield, though it wasn't enough to take the shield out, but unfortunately it wasn't enough to get a kill either. Um, with Bave selected, let's go in and finish these guys off. This one should be an almost um, guaranteed kill because this thing is uh, right in front of us. So we're going to go ahead and just fill it with some lead right in the back. And the other one is a little bit further away. We could try and finish off this one that's partially damaged or we can go for this one. Let's try and get rid of this one if possible. So it's quite far away this one. As you can see, the outer circle isn't completely full of target. We could aim a little higher, but then we're just putting bullets into the carapace. So we're going to go a little bit lower and hopefully get lucky. And we did a fair amount of damage, but we didn't get the kill. Once again, bear in mind, if you are playing through this, this is the tutorial. You can't really fail it. As you will see, we will take some hits here, but we won't actually die. This is just designed to give you uh, an introduction to the mechanics. As you see, we will survive this miraculously. So now we can go ahead and finish these guys off. Let's jump over the wall, get behind these crabs. Now it is possible to hit more than one target at the same time if you are in a good position for it. So if I was to aim here and we were to kill this one, any remaining shots have the chance of going through and hitting the target behind, uh, which we actually did. We hit his shield. Uh, if he didn't have his shield facing us, we might have even killed both of them. So let's go ahead and avoid the shield and shoot into the carapace. Now we're getting a little bit of a tutorial on vehicles. Vehicles are armoured personnel carriers with a mounted weapon. Soldiers can enter the vehicle by moving on the entry marker next to the vehicle and then pressing enter vehicle on the action bar. So we need to get our soldiers there. We don't have enough action points to get there in a single turn. So we will get as close as we can. We will end the turn there, and then we will just move our soldiers into the back of the vehicle. Once you're standing in that position at the rear, you will have an enter vehicle action on the action bar. So we need to do this with both of our soldiers, and that should be the mission complete.
And both of our soldiers gain a level up. If you are hearing this message, an alert has been triggered and you will need to clear out the enemy forces. There may be others who receive this signal. Help them if you can. It's all up to you now. Good luck, operatives. Symes out. So here we are at Phoenix Point, the last known remaining facility of the Phoenix Project. This is another little bit of the tactical tutorial that teaches us about the inventory and some other game mechanics. I'm going to be going through this part relatively quickly, but still explaining some of the key features. So inventory. The inventory shows everything carried by a soldier and items on the ground or in adjacent crates. Encumbrance. If the weight of all carried items and armor is greater than the soldier's strength, then the soldier suffers a movement penalty. We can access the inventory by pressing the I key or clicking on the little backpack icon. The tactical inventory display is divided into three sections. The ready section contains items that are currently equipped and ready for immediate use, so these are the three slots here. The backpack holds all the items carried but not currently equipped. And the ground shows all the items on the soldier's tile or in surrounding tiles. Entering the inventory display doesn't have an action point cost, but moving any number of items from one section to another has a fixed cost of one action point. The only exception to this is moving items to the ground, which doesn't cost anything. So if you want to drop, you can open the inventory as many times as you like, doesn't have a cost. You can drop stuff on the floor, doesn't have a cost. And then you can move any amount of items between other spaces for one action point. So, we are going to go ahead and move over to this crate. Equipment crates contain weapons, ammo, and other equipment. The first time a unit moves next to an equipment crate, the inventory is automatically opened and the soldier will get a will point bonus. Moving any number of items from the crate to a soldier's backpack or ready slot contains one action point. So we're going to move next to the crate. The crate will open automatically. And we can see this crate contains a couple of med kits. It contains a Hell 2 cannon. Uh, which we're not proficient for using, hence the little exclamation mark. Some ammunition for that and a couple of grenades. But it's telling us it wants us to equip a med kit, so we're going to put the med kit in our ready slot, and it wants us to equip a grenade. So we'll do that, and as you can see, it's going to cost us one action point. So we've now picked up the med kit and the grenade. You can see those along the bottom of the screen. These are the items in our ready slots, and you can switch between the items in your ready slots as much as you like without an action point cost. We're going to go ahead and select lease, move her over to this position here. And as you can see, we spot two enemies. We didn't automatically stop, but this is part of the scripted tutorial. Here you can see a heavy. It's also possible to come across allied characters in battle. Allies surrounded by a blue circle can be rescued and come under your control. We're going to end our turn for now. And we take a few shots from the Krabbies. And now we are bleeding and our torso is disabled. Status effects are bonuses or penalties that affect a unit for a certain amount of time. Positive effects are usually acquired through abilities, while negative effects come from enemy weapons and abilities. Bleeding is one of the most common status effects. Soldiers suffering from bleeding are dealt a set amount of damage at the start of their turn equal to their bleed level. Bleeding can be cured by using a medkit. After a mission ends, bleeding and disabled limbs are cured, but hit points need to be restored at a base with a medical facility. Ready items bar. Items in the ready section of the inventory are shown in the ready items bar and they can be selected without an AP cost. We're going to go ahead and select the grenade on Bave here. We will move Heading forwards out. in front of Lease, And we're going to go ahead and throw the grenade. Grenades do area damage around the spot where they land. An orange sphere shows the area of effect. The distance at which a grenade can be thrown depends on the soldier's strength and abilities. Let's so this. let's go and target this spot between the two enemies. We should take them both out and we'll probably destroy the couple as well. So there goes the two Krabbies. We're going to end our turn for now. And as you can see, we take some bleed damage on Elise. 
Medkits and healing. Medkits restore hit points and remove bleeding and poison status effects. A soldier must be next to the injured soldier in order to heal him or her. Select the medkit. Select the medkit from the action bar to heal yourself, uh, to heal our soldier because we're not healing ourselves. So we can see that we're next to a soldier with a little green first aid icon next to them, which means that they have lost health. We're going to use the medkit. Are you okay? And heal Lise up. So it gives her 120 hit points back and it removes the bleed. We also need to rescue our ally. Allied characters are rescued by moving a soldier next to them. After they are rescued, the character can be given orders along with the rest of your squad. So we're, we're going to grab Lise and we're going to move her next to the heavy. Soldier classes. There are various soldier classes, each with their own set of abilities and equipment proficiencies. While any soldier can use any armor or weapon, doing so comes at the risk of lower accuracy or fumbling. The heavy class soldiers are proficient in heavy weapons and usually equipped with armor capable of enduring large amounts of damage. Their emblematic jetpack suit allows them to fly over obstacles and reach high points with each with ease. Ready. Will points and advanced abilities. Willpower determines a soldier's will to fight and ability to perform advanced class abilities. A soldier begins battle with will points equal to his willpower. They are displayed in the bottom left corner of the screen. Will points can be gained by killing enemies, opening crates or reaching objective zones. They can be lost when an ally dies. If a unit's willpower falls to zero, it panics and loses a turn. Will points can be partially restored by using the recovery ability. Use the heavy's jump jet ability, jump over the wing of the aircraft and land near the enemy. So as you can see, we have our jump jet ability down here. It costs us three of our four action points. And you can also see that it costs us two willpower, or two will points. This is actually displayed on the action bar at the bottom. The three little blue lines below the icon represent the number of action points used. And the number in the white uh, little head icon represents the number of will points. Using this ability allows us to jump anywhere within 20 tiles. It's giving us a specific space to land in. So let's go ahead and get ourselves over there. And we've spotted ourselves an enemy. We're going to go ahead and end the turn as per the tutorial. And a Krabby moves towards us. Deploys his shield. And there's a second one hiding in the corner. Also deploys his shield. And now we take some shots from the guy with the machine gun. Combat reactions. Some abilities such as return fire allow characters to react during the enemy turn. Return fire allows a character to shoot back when enemies shoot at it or any of its allies as long as the attacker is within 18 tiles of the target. Only certain weapons are able to return fire, regardless of what skills a unit might have. Move your assault next. Uh, move your assault under the wing, then shoot the enemy and observe the return fire. So we're going to go ahead and move Bave over here, and we're going to go ahead and take a shot at this Arthron. We won't kill it, but this guy has return fire. We can see that he has return fire because the return fire icon is above his um, class icon down at the bottom there, that little white. This icon here is next to his head. So let's go and fire. So we take the shot. And he automatically gets to shoot back. So that's how return fire works. And you can get that on your soldiers too. Then there's Overwatch. The Overwatch ability allows soldiers to guard an area during the enemy's turn. If an enemy enters the Overwatch cone, it is attacked automatically. So we're going to go ahead and select uh, Lise here. Move her over to this position. And the tutorial wants us to place an Overwatch in this area. So you can adjust the length of the Overwatch cone by dragging it with the mouse. Obviously the the further the distance of the cone the wider the end is going to be but if you hold down control and zoom in and out with the mouse wheel you can actually adjust the tightness of the cone but we'll leave it at the default uh, width and select the appropriate position so this tells us about the character info panel the character's stats equipment body parts abilities and status effect can be viewed at any time in the in combat from the character info panel you can view info for enemies as well as your own soldiers so if we go ahead and select a soldier, we get this little info pop-up. We can click on that, and that will show us our hit points, our will points, how much movement we have left, 
things like our perception along with any accuracy or stealth bonuses and you can see all of our individual body part hit points and you can see what our abilities are let's go ahead and close that and now we should be prompted to end the turn so these guys are probably going to go and attack now we actually return fire there we hit our heavy now this is a very important thing here as i mentioned uh, in the first part of the tutorial it is possible to hit friendly so sometimes you really want to consider the direction that you're overwatching in so we take a few hits here but that is generally fine we'll just let them finish having their turn okay so now it's our turn and we have to defeat all the enemies the first thing that we want to do is get rid of this guy over here with the gun. The reason for that is he has returned fire. If we start shooting at or attacking these two guys, this guy's going to get a free shot every time. We don't want that to happen. So let's finish this guy off first. Enemy putting down. a nice big hole in the wall. So in Phoenix Point, vast majority of the terrain and items within the map are destructible. There are some things that are indestructible, like the solid walls of bases, but you can blow a lot of stuff up. Let's go ahead and try and finish this guy off. Now his shield's in the way, which is a little bit of a problem, but there's always a soft fleshy part you can get to. Of course, we've got plenty of action points, so the best thing for us to do is to just step around behind him. We'll get a much better shot, and we can go ahead and put these bullets somewhere where they're guaranteed to hit. Now the Heavy has the Hell Cannon. I absolutely love this weapon. Uh, you can't move very far and still be able to fire it on the same turn. It requires a lot of action points. But when this thing hits, it's very inaccurate. It has an absolutely huge targeting reticule. But hit something with this. It's not getting back up again. I love this weapon. And there we are. Another mission complete. We get another level up for Bave. And uh, nothing for Lise this time around. And Adrian is injured. 